Hi, everyone, and welcome back to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in global connectivity, real estate, and the networks within. I'm Barb Mitchell from JSA, and I'm honored to be joined today by Greg Rolls, who's the Managing Director of Development and Construction at Powerhouse Data Centers. Thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. Yeah, so great to have you here. And, um, you know, it's day two. I had to think about that for a second. <laughs> day two uh, in, in dog years, I think, at ITW. Um, how's the week going for you? You know, any any first thoughts? On the oh, show it, this year? Uh, it's been fantastic. And it really has been uh, the summation of what we've heard over the last year or two about how the industry is advancing. Um, lots of talk around AI, which we'll get into. Yeah. Lots of talk about demand drivers. Um, so it really has been fantastic. And uh, and uh, the ple I've been a pleasure uh, attending some of the panels and just learning more about different perspectives across the industry. Okay, great. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I know that you can, I, I believe you can speak to you is just this great resurgence that's happening across commercial real estate. Sure. Uh, can you talk about what's driving that and how Powerhouse Data Centers is, is really set to respond? Sure, happy to do that. And really, I'll tell you a little bit about the company to begin okay. with. So our parent company, American Real Estate Partners, has been around since 2003. So 21 years of really real estate development, <clears throat> excuse me, and ownership um, across the real estate sector and really across the country. Um, we launched the Powerhouse platform in 2015. Uh, we launched that with uh, an acquisition in, in Ashburn, where ultimately um, we ended up selling some of that land. It didn't do that development, but it really positioned us well to take off. Right now, we are uh, uh, 500,000, uh, sorry, 500 megawatts yep. of power in Ashburn alone, um, uh, almost a million square feet. And, and <clears throat> And we've expanded really across the country at this point. Yeah, it's been a lot of talking this week, hasn't <clears throat> it? It has. I know. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, no, that's um, understandable. I mean, you're you're busy telling your story and, and chatting with folks, and uh, you mentioned that one of the conversations that's been coming up consistently is around AI. Right. Uh, so talk a little bit about that and how that's you know factoring into some of this growing demand. Sure. Yeah, the demand drivers around not only AI but machine learning, um, so many different aspects of what are what's called high density compute are really fueling the industry. Um, it, has, it, it has certainly, um, especially in light of some of the power constraints that are occurring in some of the major markets, it has pushed us farther afield. It has caused us, it's caused us to, look, uh, to, to look into uh, secondary markets, um, that are, some of those secondary markets are really very rapidly becoming primary markets. Um, and really what has positioned us well is our history as being owners and developers in the real estate market in general, commercial real estate. We have long-standing relationships across the country um, that allow us and really have caused us to develop an expertise in property evaluation, uh, in analyzing what it takes in order to build a successful data center, um, forging relationships with municipalities, forging relationships with utilities, because obviously the, the, you know, the bread and butter of any data center deal is a real estate deal, and now a real estate deal coupled with power. That's what really fuels us. Yeah. So when you think about, you know, I know you're talking a little bit about development and, and design and, and sort of deploying mm -hmm. against some of these demands and needs that, that people have. Right. Um, what are the trends in construction from that, uh, you know, meeting that? Yeah. Um, aside from power, I think one of our greatest constraints is, uh, is supply chain. Um, now, thankfully, that has lessened some since since the pandemic has curbed. But still, we're seeing supply chain issues, especially materials that need to come uh, from Asia uh, and really the larger equipment that is at the utility level. So larger transformers, larger circuit breakers that are actually stepping down power from the transmission lines. Um, those continue to still be an issue. Um, we still have plenty of work to do up front in order to be prepared for that. So getting in early to some of these municipalities, getting in early with the utility companies, um, and in fact, on occasion, deploying capital, perhaps sooner than we would like to, but still deploying capital in order to lock up those commitments from the utilities, that's really the primary driver right now. The other thing that we're seeing as a trend, and it really is no secret, is the densities of power that are having to be deployed in, in the data centers themselves. Uh, and then, uh, and then, then the, the the mechanical cooling that needs to come along with that in order to reject the heat. 
direct to chip right now is is obviously the only way to get that done in the super high density environments. Uh, but we're finding ways to solve that uh, based on uh, you know based on newer technology and uh, and procuring water too as we go in. That's one of the utilities we have to make sure that we procure is procuring water. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's interesting to hear you respond on, on some of these things that we're hearing, you know, a lot of people are trying to find solutions to. So it's great to hear that you're equipped to do that. I want to ask you, so we're at ITW, we already mentioned we're sort of halfway through, but mm -hmm. you've had some exciting news, I think, this week. Can you, can you share with us a little bit about that? We certainly do. And I'll start by describing, and I think I touched on it earlier, as we've, as we've moved out of some of these um, primary markets into secondary markets, um, it's really helped us spread our brand up and down the East Coast, but now um, we're, we're in Texas, so we're in Dallas Metro. We're also in Reno, Nevada, but we have an exciting announcement uh, just yesterday. Um, we are going to deploy 200 megawatts in Irving, Las Colinas, uh, and that, that development is, uh, is open for business, and we're super right. excited about that. And that was just, the press release just came out yesterday, Amazing. so we are full speed ahead in, uh, in Irving, Texas. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. It's good timing for us to be chatting. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes, it was. Um, anything else? You Any sort of parting words for us? So, you know, for people that may not have the opportunity to connect with you yeah. here in National Harbor this week. Well, it's just it's exciting times to be in the data center business. You know, we're, we're fortunate that because of our background, because of the long history that we've had uh, in development in general and the relationships that we have across the country, uh, we're just really fortunate to be part of this wave and we look forward to it continuing. I, I really think that that data centers themselves have evolved from an alternate asset class in real estate to really a primary asset class. Mm. And that has to do really with, with 25 years of longevity since really the first large scale data centers were deployed. Uh, and now the, with the advent of AI and all the other things that we just mentioned, um, the runway here is long. And so we're, we're really excited to, to yeah. be in the fast lane, so to speak, right. yeah. uh, and to continue to develop and, uh, and grow. Yeah. A lot of work still to be done. Yes, right? thankfully. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time My to, pleasure. to join with us today. My pleasure. Thank you. Um, hopefully you, you uh, can last <laughs> another couple okay. days, yeah. you know. But yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, very much appreciate your time. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Until next time, stay tuned. Happy, ne happy networking.